Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and this is our review of the Chromecast 2. Now this is not only a review, but we're actually going to show you how to set it up because we've got a lot of comments from you guys asking us how to set up the Chromecast 2. So we're going to show you exactly how to set up the Chromecast 2. And just for visual reference, we have with us the original Chromecast that was launched by Google. Now the Chromecast 2 was launched in India a couple of weeks ago and it's priced at about uh, 3,399 rupees. And it has a very nice form factor. Now one of the biggest disadvantages in the form factor of the old Chromecast was that because it has a thick neck, if you put it into a port and your ports in your television were really close, it was very difficult to get a second HDMI cable next to it. Uh, Google has addressed this with the second generation Chromecast. As you can see, the HDMI uh, dongle right here is really, really slim and the main body hangs a little lower. So it's very convenient if you've got a slightly congested setup. Uh, the Chromecast 2 is available in three colors. We have it only in black out here. And uh, in terms of form factor, it is really better than the original Chromecast as you can see a couple of shots of the two of the devices. They still need to be powered by a micro USB. Google has put in a lot more tech in this one. So our review is of the new Chromecast, but if you are purchasing a Chromecast and you find the old one at a cheaper price point, it is still worth it. It works very well. And the setup video we're going to show you, we're going to use the second generation Chromecast, but it works absolutely the exact same way with the first generation one. So we're going to get started. So as you can see, when you set up Chromecast for the first time, it'll ask you to set it up using your smartphone. It's really preferable if you have an Android smartphone. It works with iOS as well. There's no problem over there. Uh, you can go to chromecast.com slash setup. That will inevitably direct you to the Google Play Store or the App Store to download the Chromecast app, which has recently been relabeled to the Google Cast app. So let's just get that downloaded. Now, as you can see, we've already installed the Google Cast app, but as you see open, you'll just see an install button over there. Click on it and it'll install the app and you can just hit open to open the Chromecast app. Now, once you've downloaded the Google Cast app, you will have three options on the top, which will tell you what's on device and get apps. What's on is essentially a list of the content that you can watch on Chromecast, which is optimized through the app that you have on your smartphone. Devices will of course help you set up a new Chromecast device which we're going to show you in a minute and get apps essentially is a recommendation of all the apps that support Google Cast. There are some apps like Hotstar for example that does not support Google Cast natively so you actually have to cast your screen onto the television and then be able to consume content from Hotstar. Now remember your Chromecast and your phone need to be on the same Wi-Fi network for it to work functionally. Now we know we're on the 9.9 which is our company's Wi-Fi network and we're going to click at the bottom of the display which says add new device. Now when you say add new device it's going to ask you to switch on the location of your smartphone because that's how it's going to judge uh, the Chromecast is available close by. Once you have uh, the location services on on your smartphone you will see that a name Chromecast 9051 has appeared which is exactly the same name of the Chromecast that we see on the television. Now once you've identified that the name of the Chromecast is the same as the one that you have on your television all you need to do is set up and click the setup button. So yeah, just go ahead and click on set me up. Now it's gonna to connect to the Chromecast and this can take a little bit of time. Now, as you can see on the right side of the television out here, we have our 4Q7 written and we can see that uh, the smartphone app is prompting us whether we can see the same R4 Q7 uh, code on the phone as well. So once you know that both the codes are matching, all you need to do is I see this code. We're just gonna click on I see this code. Now it's gonna give you the option immediately to rename the Chromecast to whatever you want. So let's just quickly call this Chromecast digit. Now, once we've named the Chromecast, whatever name you want, you can actually enable uh, any name you want. So let's just say on set name, since we've set the name as digit. Now that we've set the name, it's going to ask you for your Wi-Fi password to be input. So we're just going to quickly input the password. Now we've typed in the password and you can see set network, which means that every time you switch on this Chromecast, it's going to connect to this exact same Wi-Fi network. This can take a couple of minutes based on your internet connectivity and the strength of your Wi-Fi. So you can be a little patient and you will see on the television, it says connecting. The Chromecast name is also going to change. It's going to show you the Wi-Fi network that you're connecting it to and you will see the same information on the app. There you have it. Now it says your device is ready to cast and on your television you will always get a really really beautiful wallpaper and sometimes on the bottom right hand you will get some information about uh, uh, the person who's clicked that photograph or where it's from and it says ready to cast. Open a cast enabled app and tap on the cast button. So if you have an app which can cast to Chromecast natively you will always see this particular icon on it. So when you see this icon let's say on YouTube or Netflix or Spool or any other app that you are watching videos on 
then you can cast it by simply clicking on this button and choosing the relevant Chromecast in your house. If you have multiple Chromecasts, if you have just one Chromecast, you will see the name of that particular Chromecast pop up. On the phone, as always, you will get an option that says Browse Cast Apps. So we're just going to quickly click on that and show you the apps on which you can use Chromecast. Now we're back to the screen I spoke about earlier, which says what's on. This time the difference is on device. You can see that it's connected to Digit and uh, Get Apps is going to show you a list of apps that you can actually download that work with Chromecast. Now there are certain games also that work with Chromecast, but we're going to come to games in just a minute. First of all, we're going to just show you how to quickly cast a YouTube video. Now once you open YouTube and let's say you can find that particular video that you are looking for. So let's just find a YouTube video from Digit itself. Now, as you can see on the top out here, you have the little cast icon, which is exactly the same as the one that we have seen on the television, which I showed you earlier. Now, clicking on this icon here gives me the option to connect to Digit. If I had multiple Chromecasts in my house on different televisions, I will see all of them out here and I can cast to that particular Chromecast. So I'm just going to click on Digit and we're going to connect and you're gonna see the television is gonna refresh, give you a little YouTube icon, and it says ready to watch. Now, let's quickly show you what a trailer will look like. When you click on a particular video, you can actually either play it or add it to a queue. You can actually build a playlist on your smartphone and still navigate your smartphone like a smartphone by adding it to the queue, and the videos will play out on your television. So for now, we're actually just gonna simply play the video for you guys. So. Here is a new trailer for uh, the remastered Batman games for the PS4 and the Xbox One. You can also control the volume from the comfort of your smartphone. Right now, we are just going to keep it at an absolute low so you can hear my voice. The video is playing out there, but on my smartphone, I can actually use it as a normal smartphone. I can add, let's say, another video to the queue so it'll play immediately after this. If I get a phone call, I can actually get out of the YouTube app. I can go, I can make and receive phone calls if I wish to do so. You can see I'm dialing a number. I can cut it. I can go into another room so long as I'm on the same wire Wi-Fi network, the video will keep playing on the television. I can even play a game on my phone for my own convenience. I can uh, navigate Facebook. I can go through my Twitter. I can essentially use my phone as a normal phone. And then through the multitasking window, you can come back to the YouTube app and control it. Like you see, I have paused the video on my phone and it has paused on the television as well. So once you want to get out of casting, now all you need to do is tap on the same button in the corner and it'll give you a little interface of the casting that's happening. And at the bottom, you will see a button which says stop casting. So all you need to do is simply click on stop casting and it's gonna switch off casting and it's just gonna come back to the ready to watch YouTube page. And after a while, when you close the YouTube app, it's gonna go back to uh, the normal wallpapers in a little bit, even when you disconnect it. Now, let's just show you another quick streaming app from Netflix. Now, as you can see, even on Netflix, the app, I have the same icon to cast onto uh, using the Chromecast. So all I need to do is click on the icon and click on digit and you will notice on the television, the interface is going to change and it is going to give you a Netflix page once it connects. Well, there you have it. Now you can see a little blue icon out here, which means that the television is ready to be casted upon by the Chromecast. And uh, just for random sake, let's just open Daredevil, for example, out here and give you a quick look at any episode and play it on Chromecast. Now you notice that on the phone, the device isn't playing. You have a very simple interface, which is a uh, interface specially made for Chromecast. You can have the subtitles option, the volume option. You can add it to your favorites. You can check the list of episodes. You can navigate to any particular point. Right now it's loading. Again, the loading is subject to your internet's capabilities. But while the episode is loading, I can show you that when you go back out of your smartphone, you exit the app, you can still use your smartphone as you regularly would so long as it's connected to the same Wi-Fi network. But when you drop down, some apps give you Chromecast notification right from your notification drop down. And as you can see, you can either pause it, stop it, rewind the episode by 30 seconds and watch it from the comfort of the drop down if you let's say do not want to open the multitasking menu. Now even when you lock your smartphone for example and you unlock it, there are times when some of the apps will support an on-screen lock screen notification giving you the ability to pause or rewind the episode. As you can see, if someone in your house wants to watch an episode of Netflix and you have a Chromecast, you can stream it from the comfort of your smartphone while sitting in another room so long as you are on the same Wi-Fi and stream the episode to your smart TV. 
There are a number of apps that support Chromecast, but like I said, Hotstar is an app that does not support Chromecast. So we're going to quickly show you how to cast or rather mirror your smartphone's display onto your television using a Chromecast. Now, as you can see, the Chromecast is back to its normal wallpaper and we are on our smartphone. But for this, what you need to do is quickly open the Google Cast app. Once you've opened the Google Cast app, you will see an option on the side menu. You click on the triple uh, three lines over there and you will be able to see an option that says cast screen slash audio. Now, once you click on the cast screen slash audio button, it's going to say that screen casting is not optimized for this device. Your experience may vary. So yes, there are times when we have seen lags and crashes, but for the most part, it works well. Choose digit. And as you can see, your smartphone display will be mirrored. Now, if you have rotation locked, you can actually put it on auto rotate. And when you rotate your smartphone, if the app supports a landscape view, that's what you are going to get. So essentially everything you do on your smartphone is something that you will be able to see on your uh, big screen. So let's say if you want to share some photos with your family and put it up on the big screen from your holiday, you can actually do that as well. Simply find your photos app, Google Photos, open it. And once it's done, it's just gonna quickly show you a bunch of photos that you have probably clicked and you can actually share them with your friends and family sitting at home. So let's say these are a few pictures that we clicked from an event that we covered. And if I want to share it with the rest of the world, I can navigate on my smartphone and I can see it out here. Now, the reason you're seeing a little casting icon both on the uh, smartphone and the television is because Google Photos does support the ability to cast, but what doesn't support the ability to cast will be used through this mirroring functionality. So if you have an app, a third party photos app that doesn't support the Chromecast, you can go through this entire mirroring process. And as you can see, there is that hair second of a lag, less than a second lag that happens when you are casting. And that is normal. It happens a lot. There are certain cast recommended apps that work very smoothly. As you can see, there is some lag between me navigating on my smartphone's display all the way up to the Chromecast. Again, some of this is to blame because of the internet connectivity, which is a little weak where we are sitting right now to shoot, but it is a lot smoother. If your internet connectivity is stronger, you will, however, still face some lag. So now to show you how Hotstar works, because Hotstar is one of those few apps that does not support the ability to cast directly. So as you can see, the Hotstar app has already started functioning on my smartphone and there was quite a bit of lag between it coming to uh, the television. Again, because an app like Hotstar doesn't support Chromecast, you are going to have to rely on the ability to mirror your smartphone. And in our experience, this mirroring hasn't really been very smooth. You're usually plagued with some lags. You are also usually plagued uh, with some random crashes is something that we have faced a lot with the Hotstar app and using it with a Chromecast. So as you can see, these lags, they of course happen many times. So screen mirroring is something that's very subject to not only your smartphone, but to the internet connectivity, the Chromecast, a lot of factors into play. So mirroring is something that you just want to do when you really, really have to do it. The quality, of course, of the video is based on the internet connectivity at your disposal. Right now, there are too many people in office logging into the same Wi-Fi network, which is why streaming a video can be a problem. Now, moving on to something else that you would probably like to do on uh, the Chromecast is game. Now, as you can see, the game is running on the smartphone, so you can actually uh, watch it on the phone, or if you want to use your television as a big display, you can do that. We're just quickly going to get into the game and give you a look and feel of how it feels to play a graphically heavy game on your smartphone to your television. For those of you that are wondering, the smartphone we're playing it on is a OnePlus One. It's a fairly old smartphone, but still capable of running the game. But this is just to give you an idea of what it looks like on a big screen display. Now there is a noticeable lag. If you can see uh, by the time the punches are thrown on the smartphone to the time when it reaches the big screen, there is a there is a lag by a number of frames. It's not even an entire second, but there is still some lag that you will notice. There are times when the game run, runs absolutely smoothly and the lag is almost invisible, but at other times the lag is fairly noticeable. So yeah, if you want to use your television display as a monitor and you, know, you want to have the whole big screen gaming experience from your smartphone, you can definitely uh, do that with this device. As you can see, a game that's graphically heavy as Injustice also looks pretty good and it's a lot of fun to play and performing the moves looks nice. You can still see a little bit of a lag. Sometimes that's also due to your the Wi-Fi router that you have in your house. But overall, it's a fairly acceptable experience. We have seen the app crash a couple of times as well. 
uh, but that again has been very rare, not something that happens too often. So here's the conclusion. Should you purchase the first generation or the second generation Chromecast? Well, the answer is really simple. There is very little competition for a device like this. Uh, there is a device called the TV2, which is also a really, really good streaming device. So you can consider that as well. But here's the deal. If you have purchased a smart TV that you got in either 2015 or 2016, chances are it already comes inbuilt with the ability to either cast content from your smartphone or it comes inbuilt with an app store where you can download apps like Hotstar, Netflix, YouTube and just control it from the convenience of the TV's remote control or the smartphone. Now if you have an older generation TV or a TV that is not a smart TV which is not internet enabled then a device like this really really makes sense. Uh, coming to the content consumption habits that we've seen with people you watch Netflix, you watch uh, Hotstar, you watch Spool, you watch Eros now all these apps you can actually cast it to your television from the comfort of your smartphone using the Chromecast. Now there are other little boxes like the Amket Evo TV 2 or the Apple TV that you can consider purchasing and keeping it under your box and controlling them directly. They also give you similar functionality but the Chromecast is small, it's neat, it can game, it has a large library of apps and the ability to screen mirror your smartphone in case you want to showcase something uh, that's only on your smartphone on a television without going through the hassle of transferring it on a pen drive, connecting it to a third party device. The Chromecast can always stay connected to the back of your television. It's easy, it's convenient, and it can even connect to an HDMI enabled monitor if that's something that you have and you want to watch content from your smartphone to a monitor or a television. So yes, in our book, spending about three and a half thousand rupees, 3,399 rupees to be precise for the second generation Chromecast is totally worth it. You have to keep in mind that there are a lot of abilities or a lot of third party factors because of which it might lag or create problems such as your Wi-Fi, your router, your internet connectivity. It does not support Wi-Fi direct for those of you that are wondering but yes it is a great device to stream content from your smartphone to your television you can either consider the first generation one or the second generation one it's a treat and once you get addicted to Chromecasting you will never watch television the same way at least I haven't so there you have it that was our setup and review of the Chromecast second generation setup works for both the first and the second generation one if you like the video hit the like button if you want to know more how to's let us know in the comment section below we will try to put up as many how to's as possible whether it's about the Chrome cast or any other product and for more videos like this you should subscribe to the digit youtube channel we'll catch you in another video